school to work to entertainment, shopping. So much of what we do is online, and even our kids are connected. But that unrestricted access is leading to some potentially dangerous habits. Local 12's Catherine Robinson joins us now to explain. Good morning, Catherine. Good morning. We have been talking about COVID-19 for two years now. But at the same time, experts say there's another pandemic, a silent one, happening right in our homes. Today, they don't even have to, have to sneak to find anything. It's there. It can actually be found on Snapchat. It can be found on Instagram. An unspoken pandemic. Children exposed to pornography on the devices we give them. It's on the school bus. It's in the lunchroom. It, it can, in fact, be anywhere where a child has a device that's hooked up to the Internet. It's happening earlier, in some instances, while kids are still in elementary school. I think a lot of parents are naive, thinking, well, he's only eight or he's only nine or ten. Well, the research shows us now that boys are being exposed at about the age of 10 to pornography and girls are being exposed at about maybe 11 or 12 to pornography. And I think parents don't want to believe that because it's so frightening. Stephen Smith, founder and president of a Wired family, is sounding the alarm on the growing rate of porn addiction among kids and teens. If he is viewing porn on a regular basis starting at age 11, it's going to have to be progressively more stimulating for him as he becomes a teenager and as he becomes a young man. It becomes almost impossible for that young man to have a normal, healthy sexual relationship with a partner. But this is not a, a prudish concern at all. It's a mental health concern. Dr. Edward Connor is a licensed psychologist. Essentially, you're becoming addicted to the, the chemicals in your brain that your brain produces. You're not swallowing something or injecting something. It's going in visually and auditorily, and it's elevating elements of the central nervous system. That includes adrenaline, dopamine, and serotonin. It's a dangerous combination, especially when you consider the violence that's portrayed in pornography today. As they're watching, there are a lot of subliminal messages going into the brain. Again, the amount of aggression, because they're not focusing on the aggression when they watch these videotapes. They're actually focused on different body parts, and therein lies the objectification of sexuality. So the subliminal messages of aggression, though, are still entering the brain, and then they have this belief that I must act the same way. The experts agree, porn isn't going anywhere. So it's on parents to protect their children. You're setting your child up for defeat, right? Our responsibility as adults, right, is to protect our kids. And that is sometimes telling them there are certain things they can't do. And I got to tell you, this generation of parents, for the most part, blanket statement, they're not doing their job. Dr. Edward Connor says neurological issues are so important, so critical when it comes to pornography exposure because the brain is not fully developed until about 24 to 26 years old. It's so scary yeah. to think about. And that's what Dr. Connor was pointing to, saying a lot of times parents, they're kind of avoiding yeah. it because it is so scary. It's so uh, anxiety inducing. and you don't want to talk to your kids about that it's uncomfortable but you have to right yeah you don't it, want to talk to them when they're 18 let alone when they're 11. right right and he says you have to get past that and so that's a big component of what we talk about tomorrow we're telling you about this we're not just telling you we're going to help yeah. you out as well we we talk to the experts there is hope there is help and they talk about how you can have these conversations and some other safeguards that you can put in place for your family good thank you Catherine